oh cool, you're back for another video on GSAP Scroll Trigger Plugin. And in this one, we're focusing on pinning. Ouch! Before we get into the code, let's see what we mean by pinning. So I'm on this website called basicagency.com. And let's scroll down so we can get an idea of pinning. So I'm scrolling, scrolling some more. Now, as we get past this section, check out that text on the left that says basic helps brands connect with culture. Notice what happens when it gets to the top of the viewport, right? It sticks or it pins in place. I'm continuing to scroll and that video on the right is moving up in the viewport. And then as that featured news section comes in on the bottom, the text that was previously sticking continues to scroll up again. And now for another example, here on a site called thinkwithgoogle.com, what you're going to notice is that as I scroll down the page, these blocks of text on the left are going to become pins when they reach the center of the viewport. So here comes one of those, and you see it get pinned right there. Now if I continue scrolling, that animation on the right is going to continue to develop, and then at some point, the text on the left is going to become unpinned and continue scrolling up with the page. And the same thing keeps happening as we continue down the page. Text becomes pinned again, animation on the right continues as I scroll, and then the text on the left becomes unpinned. And again, we can see it here. So they're using pinning as a way to help deliver the narrative. Now that we have the basic idea of how pinning can be used, let's go ahead and see how we can implement it in our code in Scroll Trigger. So just as a refresher, coming from the last video, this is what we had going on in the browser. We had our scroller start and our scroller end markers here. And if I scroll down a little bit, we can see on the bottom our box, which is acting as both the target and the trigger. And right now its start and end points are set to be at the top of the box. So once the box's start point hits the scroller start, we're going to see the animation of the box start. And you can see it move across the screen. But also notice as is, it's not being pinned. So as I continue scrolling down the page, it continues moving upwards. So let's go into VS Code now and see how we can pin that element in place. Woohoo! So I'm back here in VS Code. As you can see on the left, I have my index.html file. And on the right, I have my JavaScript file, app.js. Now all I have to do to pin my target element is come into my scroll trigger object and set the property of pin to a value of true. So I'm going to save this, and then we're going to go into the browser and check it out. As I scroll down now, what you're going to see is that the start of the trigger element, once it hits the scroller start, it's going to start animating. However, it's not going to scroll up with the page. It's only going to move horizontally. Until, notice the end point of the trigger element, once it hits the scroller end here, then finally it starts scrolling up with the page again. So basically what's happening is that this zone here between the scroller start and the scroller end, when the scroll trigger is active, this is going to determine the point at which the target element gets pinned and then unpinned. Now with this example, since we set pin to true, this is going to pin the trigger. So what's getting pinned is the element with the class of square. However, we can make the element that gets pinned something different than the trigger element. So let's give that a try. In the HTML, what I'm going to do under line 13, I'm going to make another div and I'm going to call it square2. And then I'm going to open up my CSS file and I'm going to copy my rule for the square class. I'm going to come underneath, copy it, make a class for square2, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background color to green. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'll close out of my CSS file. And now we'll take a look in the browser just to see what we have. So if we scroll down, what we've got here is we've got that fuchsia box, which is a trigger element, and is also the element getting pinned. And you can see coming up right behind it is that square two, or that green box that we created. Instead of making the fuchsia box though being the trigger for itself, let's come in here into our scroll trigger object and let's make square two be the trigger. And now in this case, if the element that we want to pin is actually the first square, instead of giving pin a value of true, we'll give it the name of the element that we want to pin. 
and that's the element with a class of square like that. And one last thing I'm going to do before we actually take a look at this in the browser, I'm going to put another property on the scroll trigger object, and this one is called pin spacing. So I'm going to say pin spacing, and I'm going to set this one for now to a value of false. And we're going to talk about this pin spacing a little bit more in a moment. But for now, we'll just include it in our object. And let's switch over to the browser and take a look. So I'm going to scroll down now. And notice that the fuchsia box is no longer going to be the one that triggers the pinning. It's the green box that's coming up behind it, which is going to trigger the pinning of the fuchsia box. And there we go. You see the start of the green box past the scroller start. So the fuchsia box got pinned and started its animation as well. And then as the end of the green box comes past the scroller end, you're going to see that fuchsia box scroll up with the browser. Let's go back now and take a closer look at that pin spacing property. So what we had done is we had set pin spacing to false. However, let's go in here and let's change that to true. Now when we go back to the browser, what we're going to see is that setting pin spacing to true is going to add padding to the bottom of the element that we want to be pinned, which in this case is that fuchsia element with the class of square. And as a convenience, it's going to automatically add the proper amount of padding needed under the pinned element so that the element following it, which in this case is that green box with the class of square 2, is not going to come under it or overlap it during the period in which it's pinned. Let's go take a look at it in the browser, and we can see for ourselves how it works. So now I'm going to start scrolling down, and notice under the fuchsia box that there's a lot of padding here. And what you'll notice is that as the animation starts and the element is pinned, that green box won't get in its way, and will only come up to meet it once the end meets the scroller end. Right there. I think what would make it even easier to see is if we just eliminated the transform x property, we'll comment it out, and now let's save and let's go back to the browser. So let's give it a try one more time. Let's scroll up, and now we should see that element pinned, since it no longer has that transform translate x, it just stays in place until the green box comes up to meet it, and then it goes up. So thanks for checking out yet another video on the Scroll Trigger plugin. If you feel like you got some value out of the video, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell icon so you can get notified when new videos are released. I'll see you next time.